Hello everybody, thanks for watching vlog 25. This week I want to do it a little bit different because I would love to tell you a little bit about my cockpit. And this is basically because passengers have a look in the cockpit and they, the first thing they say is Oh my god, so many buttons. How do you know, how do you recognize each button and how do you know what every button does? So I would love to take, a little, to take you on a little bit of a closer look to, into the cockpit. I'm going to do it right now. I'm here outside on my veranda with the cockpit posters just because the light is the best. So I would love to take, to take you on a closer look into this cockpit and I would love to explain a little bit about the different systems and about everything you can see on the screens and how everything works. So are you ready? So if we look at this part, um, it contains six screens. These two screens, but then oppositely, are the same. That's because we have the captain sitting here and the first officer sitting here. This screen is the primary flight display. Here we have all the data that we need to see immediately. So without having to look away, we will know all the different modes and all the different settings and the current situation. On this screen, we, it's the navigation display and uh, we can see uh, the routing of the plane. We can see the heading, we have some details such as the wind and a radio aid. On this panel here, and then I want to focus mostly on this panel, you can select the uh, speed, the heading and the altitude. Basically, when the air traffic control clears us to fly a certain heading, we turn on the heading knob and we select, we tell the plane we want to fly heading 245 in this case. If we're in autopilot, the plane will, will start, once we select this new heading, the plane will start turning immediately to that heading. If we're flying manually, we will see here, we will see here that heading 245 is selected and we will start turning. We have the flight director here, the purple, uh, the purple cross, it will show us where to turn to. Um, the nice thing is that whatever we select here, we will be able to cross-check here. We will be able to see here. So without looking at this panel, we can even start turning the button like this while looking at this screen, because we will always see the selected heading the altitude and the speed on this screen. It's not the best location for the cockpit because there is a bit of wind. <laughs> Whatever we have selected here we will be able to see in our primary flight displays. It's really important to cross-check that whatever we have selected here we will be able to see here because that means that whatever is selected or whatever we try to select is in fact selected. These buttons here which is again the same on both sides, is basically different buttons to select um, the modes of the navigation display. So what we want to see, what we don't want to see, and the range. So let's have a closer look at the pedestal. On the pedestal you find usually two computers. In here we insert data such as uh, the airport of origin, the airport of destination, and we can insert the route, we can insert certain settings. It's basically a way to tell the plane what we're planning to do that day. Um, whatever route we insert here will be displayed on the navigation display that I just explained. Then we have here the standby indicator in, in case any of the normal sensors or uh, displays fails. We still have a standby instrument to show the basic flight data, such as the heading, the speed, and the altitude. Here we have the throttle quadrant. The throttle is basically what we use to add power and to reduce power. On this side of the throttle we have the uh, speed brakes. This we, we usually use in case, um, for example, if we get for example, if we get a uh, shortcut, which is great, um, we may end up a little bit higher, a little bit fast, 
um, because we have been planning our descent differently, higher, and then when we were told to, to use a shortcut, which we love because we will arrive earlier in the destination and we will sur save some fuel, uh, but we may need to use a little bit of speed brakes to get back on track, to get back on the vertical profile. And um, on this side we have the, uh, the cr fuel crossfeed which we use in case we want to uh, feed an engine with the opposite fuel tank. Let's say we have a fuel imbalance and then we say, ah, oh, okay, for let's say a minute we use uh, just one fuel tank with the higher level in order to balance it out. And here we have the flaps. We use flaps, um, different flap setting for landing and for takeoff. Flaps and sleds basically allow us to uh, fly controlled at a lower speed. Uh, selecting flaps will increase the surface of the wing, therefore increasing both the lift and the drag. It allows us to fly controlled and safely at a lower speed than high up in the air. Here we have the communication panel where we can select different frequencies for communication so we can talk to the control tower. Here we have the weather radar and the TICAS. Both of these systems I'm so happy to explain you in another video because they are very very important for us and um, they would require a lot of explanation and I kind of want to keep it a little bit basic in this video. And then here we have the overhead panel which we find usually above our head. This is all the systems. Alright, so on this panel we have the hydraulic system, with these hydraulic pumps, we pressurize the hydraulic system, which is basically fluid going through the pipes. And many of our flight controls and flight surfaces, such as the flaps, the landing gear, and the thrust reverses, they are um, moved in by the hydraulic system. Then we have the electrical system. The electrical system looks usually a little bit difficult. And also because it has many buttons, many lights, many switches. Basically, um, uh, the electrical system is based on three different generators. A generator provides electrical power to the plane. We have the left end generator, which comes from the left engine. The right generator coming from the right engine. Then we have the APU, which is the auxiliary power unit. The auxiliary power unit is a little um, engine in the back of the plane that when we turn it on on ground it will provide us power and air with either generator the plane gets its electrical power the nice thing is as you can see here on the panel if you didn't really remember how something worked it actually has lines and displays written on the panel and this is a really nice way if we don't remember something to realize how things are connected these but buttons we only use in case of a certain procedure. Uh, so usually we don't touch these buttons. Here's the power for the galley. This is emergency power and the battery switch. Then here we have the air panel. The air system is very important because it provides the pressurization in flight, but also takes care of the air conditioning. Here we have the fuel panel, which is quite straightforward because it's basically uh, every tank. We have a left tank, a center tank, and a right tank. So basically, if we want to burn fuel from a certain tank, we turn on the pump. The left pumps and the right pumps are usually on in flight. This panel is taking care about all the lights. The cockpit lights, the lights for outside, so the landing lights and the uh, beacon lights. I'm going to have to wrap it up, literally. <laughs> what else is really important? The ice protection system. The ice protection system will heat up, for example, uh, the inlet of the engines or the airfoils or the windshield. And this is in case we um, end up in clouds and we may get icing on, um, on any of the airplane surface, which we don't want because it increases our drag and it's really it could be quite dangerous. 
So this is why we have the ice protection systems that takes care of all of that. The nice thing is that if you compare this cockpit of the 717 with any other uh, cockpit, all of them have the same kind of cockpit layout. And with the same cockpit layout, I mean they have an overhead panel, five or six screens in the middle, and a pedestal. This cockpit layout you will find in a Airbus 320, an Airbus 380, a Boeing 737, a Boeing 777, a Boeing 747, an Embraer 175. You will you name it and you will find this cockpit layout. But then the inside, the actual meaning, the, the actual overhead panel itself, or the actual pedestal itself will be different. So that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this little explanation of the cockpit. Um, if you've liked it, please subscribe and like this video. And um, if you have any questions, write them below because I will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much and I will see you next week.